wasn't expecting to speak today, but I'm always, always uh, glad uh, for the opportunity to come and share with you guys. Uh, uh, Jan and I, are, our hearts are, are like with Jan and, and the, uh, uh, with Jan, <laughs> with Andrew and his whole family here. And the times that we've been here, we've been able to already just build some, some heart connections with people here. So when we walk in, it's like a, it almost feels like home to us. And I hope you feel the same way. Uh, so thanks for allowing me to come and share on this, on this special day. Uh, I, I, think, uh, I think it's good that we have special days like this, Mother's Day, Father's Day. Um, I think if you're, a good, if you're a good child, if you're a good kid, uh, you're, you're not just waiting for one day to uh, uh, sh- tell your mom or your dad how much you love them, how much you appreciate them. Hopefully you're telling them that, you know, sprinkled throughout the whole year. But I think it's good to have a special day where we show our, our love and our appreciation for, for mom or for dad uh, in a more demonstrative way. And hopefully you've done that. Hopefully, you know, before today you maybe sent a card off to mom. You know, uh, so if she lives somewhere else, she got that card in the mail saying, uh, Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Uh, Maybe uh, you sent her flowers, maybe chocolates, whatever it is. Maybe it's a special meal today. Maybe you're going to get together with Mom for a special meal, and it's going to be a meal not prepared by Mother. (laughs) How many mothers have had to prepare Mother's Day meals? (laughs) Ah, look at that. Shame, 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 shame. Uh, no, meals pr- not prepared by mom. Or if your mom has passed away. Maybe today will be that day when you just pause for a few moments and just take some time to reflect on your mom and how much you miss her. Uh, of course, e- each one of our mothers is going to differ slightly from the next person's mom. Uh, some moms are tall, some moms are short. <laughs> Some, some moms have spent a lot of time in school. They may be highly educated. Some other moms are a bit more, let's just say, homespun. Uh, some moms are, are quiet and reserved. Other moms are loud and they're quick to fill a room with chatter and, and laughter. But you know, whatever the differences we see in other people's moms, whatever differences we see in our mothers, there is one trait that I think is found in every mom. And that is that mothers give. That's actually the title of my message this morning. Mothers give. They are a bundle of self-sacrificing love all tied up in an apron string. And kids, if you don't know what an apron is, ask grandma. But this morning, I'd like to share just four ways that demonstrate the giving nature found in every mother. And the first, and I think the most obvious one, is that mothers give life. I mean, that's it, isn't it? That's how a woman becomes a mother. They give life. In Genesis chapter 2, Moses tells us that at creation, God, first of all, formed Adam out of the dust of the earth. He formed the man. He breathed life into him, and he became a living soul. Then God, using a little bit of heavenly anesthesia, he puts Adam to sleep. And I kind of picture Adam kind of nestled up next to a tree. He puts Adam to sleep, and he removes one of Adam's ribs, and he forms the first woman. And that, that, of course, was Eve. Now, when you jump into the New Testament, Paul tells the Corinthian church that God has given the man, the husband, the responsibility of serving his family as the head of the household. But Paul also points out the fact that man is not independent of woman. I just want want us to look at this one scripture here today. So if you will grab a Bible early here in my message, would you turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 11? I just want you to take a look at this. We're not going to look at a lot of scriptures today, but I never feel right going through a whole message and never inviting you to open up your Bibles. In fact, when I was pastoring Friendship Assembly of God, I had a uh, a saying uh, that was that if I go through a whole message and never invite you to open up your Bibles, you have my permission to grab me by the seat of the pants and throw me out in the street. 
And I had a lady that usually sat right about there, and she kept track, too. <laughs> she kept track. So if you have found 1 Corinthians chapter 11, uh, join me there in verse 11. 1 Corinthians 11, 11, Paul says, In the Lord, however, woman is not independent of man, nor is man independent of woman. For as woman came from a man, of course, Paul is referring back to Genesis there, where Eve came from Adam. For as woman came from man, so also man is born of woman. But everything comes from God. I love that. That's a great verse. You know, so we see from Scripture that at creation, the woman came from the man. But ever since that time, all of us have come from a woman, our mothers. And of course, Paul is careful to include the fact that everything comes from God. Everything comes from God. Yes, men and women, we play this, uh, this unique and special part in all of this. And I'm not going to go into details, but Every birth is ultimately a miraculous gift from God. You just ask any mother or father, the moment that little baby is laid into their arms for the first time, you ask them if they believe in miracles. Am I right? Yeah. But it is, I think as Eric said this morning, I think he's right, I think it is safe to say that the mother sacrifices the most when bringing children into the world. Feel free to give some hearty amens, ladies. This is your day. <laughs> you may not get opportunities like this again. <laughs> yeah, women sacrifice the most. There's the whole physical aspect. Am I right? That, look at the ladies' heads going like this. <laughs> yeah, there's the whole physical aspect of, of this. Uh, we husbands, we try to help by saying very silly things. <laughs> we, we, we say things like, Oh, honey, you have such a glow about you. <laughs> and our wives say, oh, really? <laughs> I have a glow about me. Well, so does the moon. And I feel just about as big. What I want is to get back into my regular clothes. <laughs> but it's true. You know, and then there's the whole hormonal change that takes part here, including the mood swings. And, and again, we, us husbands, we, we try to put a smile on it, but inside we're going, who is this woman? <laughs> and what has she done with my wife? We laugh about these things after the fact. We laugh about these things after the fact. But guys, these are real sacrifices that our wives make as they become mothers. Come on, guys. Amen? Amen. Amen. You know, after the fall of mankind in the Garden of Eve, at Eden, uh, when Adam and Eve had sinned, God said that there was going to be consequences. And he told Eve that there's going to be an increase in the pain of childbirth. Now, when I look at what's taking place during childbirth, <laughs> I wonder how it could be anything but painful. Am I right? Yeah. But God gives mothers supernatural strength and ability. They are superheroes. Again, ladies, you're way too quiet today. <laughs> this is your chance. Guys, you agree with me, don't you? Our wives are superheroes when it comes to their ability to go through this whole process of childbirth. It's an amazing thing. God gives them supernatural strength, supernatural ability, and praise God, he gives them a very short memory. <laughs> In that delivery room, as those tears of pain turn into tears of joy, when that baby is delivered, I'm always amazed that that mother can look into the face of her husband and say, oh, honey, Let's have another one. <laughs> but friends, that's what the experience of bringing life into the world does to a mother. They will do it for that experience of bringing a life into this world. 
but pregnancy is, and childbirth, that's the only the beginning of this life of giving displayed in a mother. From the moment that that mother takes that baby into her arms, a life of giving care begins. That's my point number two today. Mothers give care. Now at this point, fathers, we play a part in this as well. We assume part of the responsibility, but there again, <laughs> there's a difference. There's a difference in our responsibilities. Uh, you can tell the difference between moms and dads in this. Now in a gathering like this, if in the middle of my message, a baby starts to cry, what are all the guys thinking? I'll let you know. The guys are thinking, wait a minute, this guy is so good, that was a joke, <laughs> this guy is so good, I can hardly hear him. Can't you get that kid to be quiet? Put a sock in it. You know, they're saying, quiet that kid down. But if a baby in this service starts to cry, what are all the mothers thinking? The mothers are going, oh, I think that baby needs me. And it's not even her baby. <laughs> There's something about mothers. They hear a baby cry, oh, that baby needs me. There is something different between guys and gals here. Mothers change, yes, the majority of the diapers. And what about the unique way that they find to determine whether or not baby's diaper needs changing? Us guys, we like to sing, macho, macho man. Give me a break. <laughs> How many of you macho men would put your nose there? <laughs> not this macho man. <laughs> How many of you strong men out there are going to use the dipstick method? Yep, she's a fool. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. But mother will do whatever it takes to give baby the care that he or she needs. My wife, thanks for, thanks for uh, giving Jan a hand today. I, she really appreciated that. I did too. Uh, my wife, if you visit with her after church today, she may say something like this to you. Let me get you on my good ear. She's got one ear that just doesn't work very well anymore. And so she'll say, get, let me get you on my good ear. But when we were raising our kids, Jan had the gift of supernatural hearing. <laughs> she really did. We, uh, we could be laying in, in bed in the middle of the night, sound asleep, and all of a sudden, boom! I wake up, and I look over, and Jan is already mostly out the door. What has happened? In the middle of the night, while I'm sound asleep, my wife, with her supernatural hearing, heard one of our kids go, <laughs> <laughs> That's all it took. <laughs> Boom! She's out of bed, out the door, and she's helping that little one to the bathroom because it's going to be a rough night for that child. That's what mothers do. That's supernatural hearing. <laughs> you know, I looked up the word motherly, in the good old Webster's Dictionary, this is what it said. It said, tender and affectionate. Mmm, that's good. Isn't that it? When you think of your mom. Tender and affectionate. This is what we think of when we think of our mothers. That, that tender touch. That tender touch in the middle of the night when we were little and we woke up and, and, and our tummies were sick and here's mom loving us. In the middle of the night, taking us to the bathroom, sitting with us. Uh, that tender touch, uh, you know, tucking us into bed. Holding us when we're scared. Reading our favorite book for the hundredth time. Tenderness. Affectionate. That's our moms. Praying with us at night. But part of the care that mothers give is also in the area of training in righteousness. It's an important part, Mom. It's a responsibility that God has given you. Training in righteousness. When I was growing up, my mom was the picket line that I had to cross if I was on my way to get into trouble. Anybody else? It was Mom. <laughs> Years ago, I, I wrote a letter to the editor of the Mora newspaper in response to an article that they had printed 
And in the article that they had printed in the newspaper, the author of that article was insinuating that parents that occasionally give their child a spanking, and that little cushy spot back here, parents that occasionally give that child a spanking should be viewed no different than any other child abuser. Any other child abuser who locks their children in the closet or in the freezer. Come on, I had to respond. I had to respond. You know, in my letter I wrote how there were times when I was growing up when I received a spanking. Not a beating. How many know there's a difference? Uh, but I received a spanking. I knew as a child, I knew what the rules were. My mom and dad didn't spank me for any old reason. My mom and dad weren't people that would give you the backhand for no reason or anything like, nothing like that. But I knew as a child growing up that if mom and dad said, do this, and I looked at him and said, no, I knew that my little behind might be shown a little attention. If, if mom and dad said, don't do that, and I went and did it anyway, I knew that there would be a consequence to disobeying the authority of my parents. I knew that. Again, not a beating. There is a difference, but I would receive a spanking. I would be disciplined sometimes that way. My, in, in our home, and I think maybe looking at, maybe especially some of you older folks, I lived at a time where... Uh, it was, it, was a, it was a good time. Not every mom had to work, and I know a lot of you moms, in order to pay all the bills, moms a lot of time have to work. You have to have two incomes coming in. Back in my day, mom didn't have to work, and so she was home with the kids while dad was at work, and so for that reason, mom often did the disciplining. When we, when we needed a spanking, it was, it was mom. I do remember a couple times when my dad got involved, but <coughs> excuse me, but that was usually for a capital offense that was going to result in an execution. <laughs> I don't remember what I did one time, but I don't know if I shoved my mom or if I pushed her or what, I don't remember, but I do remember the door of my bedroom opening up and my dad walking in, loosening his belt for some reason. <laughs> and him looking me in the face and saying, oh, tough guy, huh? <laughs> I think that's when I blacked out. But no, my mom would do most of the disciplining be because of that. And uh, usually what my mom would do is, she, like I said, there's a little place on a little, little Johnny's, her little Gary's backside here that's just, just perfect for those little, little swats on the hind end. And she would give me a little spanking. And then how many remember this? And then she would say, now, you go up to your room, sit on your bed, and you think about it for a while. That was worse than the spanking. Having to go up and sit on my bed, sit quietly, and think about it for an hour or so. I remember doing that. But in my, in, this, in my response to that article, in my letter to the editor, I said, yes, there were times when I openly disobeyed my parents, and it resulted in a spanking. Not a beating, but a spanking, and an, and an opportunity to go up to my bedroom and sit down and think about it for a while. But I said, and then I wrote that my, I also remember after sitting on my bed for a while, I could hear the sound of my mother's footsteps coming up the old farmhouse staircase. And then there'd be a, a little knock at my door, my bedroom door. My mom would push the door open a little bit, her head would come in and she'd say, Gary. And my mom would come in she would come and sit next to me on my bed, and my mom would finish that lesson with love. She'd put her arm around me and love me. But friends, the whole thing was love, including the little spanky on the behind end. The whole thing, the whole package was my mom loving me and showing me that there are consequences to our actions in life. Isn't that important to learn? Yeah, it is. I remember uh, when I got a little bit older, <laughs> I remember a time when my mom was actually chasing me up the same staircase, 
swing an, a yardstick at my hind end. <laughs> Are you picturing that? <laughs> or did you live through it? All right, all right. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going up the staircase. Yeah. I turn around and I bring my hand out and I caught that yardstick in midair. <laughs> And for just a moment, my mom and I are standing there eye to eye. We're just eye to eye. Then after a, a minute, we both had these big smiles on our faces. We're just smiling at each other because we both recognized that, that little Gary had passed a milestone he had passed a milestone in his life. And from that day on, discipline would come in a different way, uh, in a way other than spanking. We both recognized it. But friends, mothers give care to their children, and that includes caring enough to discipline. I might get arrested for saying that. But do you agree today? Amen. Amen. Now, it's one thing for, for mom to occasionally warm the behind of little Johnny when he's been naughty, but what about the times when somebody else tries to touch her child? Hmm. That brings me to my third point. <laughs> Mothers give protection. Mothers give protection. Men, if you are out walking through the woods one day and you happen upon a, a cute little cuddly bear cub, you might get down and go, hey there, little fella, where'd you come from? What's your next question? Aha! Where is your mama? <laughs> I don't care if it's lions or tigers or bears or Canadian geese. You do not get in between. <laughs> You've been there too, haven't you? <laughs> you? You don't get in between a mother and her baby. Uh, in the Old Testament, two women were brought one day to wise old King Solomon, both of them claiming to be the mother of a certain child. And Solomon, in all of his wisdom, said, Hey, go to the kitchen and get me a knife. What do you, 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 what are you going to do with that? I'm going to cut that baby in half, and you're going to get half, and you're going to get half. At that moment, the child's real mother said, no, 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 no. Give him to her. Don't hurt my baby. A mother will sacrifice her own rights to protect the life of her child. And right now we're all thinking about the United States Supreme Court. A mother will sacrifice her own rights to protect the life of her child. Again, in the Old Testament in Egypt, a Levite mother was placing her little baby boy named Moses, into a basket. In desperation, she's floating him away. She's sending him down a river. Why? Because the Pharaoh had decided, he looked out his window one day and said, you know, there's just getting to be way too many Hebrews in our country. Let's kill off a generation of them. So he made a decree that they were going to kill off all the baby boys. Her only hope was, I have nothing I can do. I'm going to put my baby boy Moses in this basket and I'm going to float him down the river. It's like saying, God, I'm doing only what I can do. You must take my child. You must step in and do something. But to her horror, she looks out and she sees Pharaoh's own daughter now holding her baby Moses. And without knowing it, Pharaoh's daughter says, hey, you over there, you're going to be his nursemaid. Moses' mom had to be satisfied with only being his nursemaid whenever Pharaoh's daughter called her. 
And then she had to give her own child back to the Pharaoh's daughter. And she had to go home. She couldn't take Moses with her again. She had to go home not being able to hold him, not being able to cuddle him, not being able to lay him in his bed and sing over him and dream over him. But friends, a mother will do what it takes to save her baby from harm. That's a mother. It's an amazing thing that God has given mothers. When I was a teenager, uh, a new musical group came over from Britain. They were called the Beatles. Haven't you ever heard of the Beatles? Some of you haven't heard of them? And so now all of us guys, all of us guys, we're all learning how to play guitars and we're trying to grow our hair long. <laughs> and I remember one day in uh, sixth grade, Mr. Sobrowski's class, oh, just the name, Mr. Sobrowski. Mr. Sobrowski's class, he, he was scary. He was my first male teacher. I had all these female teachers all the time, but when I got to sixth grade, you, you, were, you were just scared because now you had to have a male teacher, Mr. Sobrowski. And so, but in Mr. Sobrowski's class, he caught some of us boys, we were combing our hair down in class to see if our, our hair got down to our eyebrows because we wanted to be like the Beatles, you know, because we saw all the girls were attracted to the Beatles. So we're all combing our hair down to see how long our hair was. Mr. Sobrowski caught us, and as a joke, he let the girls in our class take out their ribbons and their bobby pins or whatever and give us a new hairdo. <laughs> Twisted it and turned it, you know, and uh, uh, today you'd see it and you wouldn't think anything of it. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but back in, we were a bunch of farm kids back in those days and so it looked re we looked really silly and if that weren't bad enough, he, then he paraded us through the fourth grade class and the fifth grade class there at Cedar Elementary School. And, uh, and hey, I was a sixth grade boy. Bring it on. Uh, any way I can get attention, I'll take it. Yeah, yeah, I don't know woo, look at this, you know. Uh, I thought it was a gas, it was great, you know. And so I went home and told my mom. <laughs> she was not laughing. Mom didn't think it was funny. <sighs> and to my horror, my mom did what every grade school kid dreaded. She called my teacher and chewed him out. <laughs> I found out later on that uh, apparently some other kids' moms called uh, the teacher and chewed him out, and apparently they didn't use the, the ladylike language that my mom used in chewing him out, but I remember going to school the next day and kind of sinking down into my chair <laughs> as Mr. Sobrowski walked up in front of the class and said, well... There'll be no more fun in class because I got a call from somebody's mother. <laughs> you don't come between a mother and her baby. Okay, finally we come to the last way in which a mother demonstrates just how much she gives. And, and that is when a child grows up and she must give him or her over to live their own life. It's a tough one. In Genesis 2.24, Moses says that a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. Isn't it interesting that the very first mention of a mother, in a, what are all you guys thinking right now? <laughs> hey, uh, all the ladies are going, I'll take her, I'll take her. <laughs> Give me that baby. <laughs> uh, but isn't it interesting that the very first mention of a mother in the Bible is not a description of the miracle of childbirth? It's not talking about how a mother will care for a child or, or protect a child. Uh -uh. The very first mention of a mother in the Bible is a reference to how she will have to give that child up to be somebody else's husband or wife. I find that very interesting. And for some mothers, this can be the most difficult thing that they will be asked to give. 
This giving a child their freedom usually begins when they send them off to school. Many tears are shed as mom sees that little one go from the security of home and mom's watchful eye to get on that big yellow bus and watch those folding doors close and that bus and that child be driven out of sight and out of mom's reach for the first time. It's a tough day for mom. Twelve years later, <laughs> now that child has graduated and now they want to go to school in another city or maybe even in another state and the pain increases for mom. When we dropped our daughter Ellie uh, off at North Central, it was a difficult day for both mom and dad. <laughs> I have to tell you a little bit about my daughter Ellie, our youngest daughter. I call her my, my little mouse because she's just always been, you know, just tiny and delicate and sensitive and, and all these things. And, and uh, I, at that time when she was little, I was working in Mora. And so I would, on my way into work, I would take her to school and I would drop her off at, at uh, Mora Elementary School. And the times that I did, so often I would get like a mile from school and eh, this little girl sitting next to me back in those days you could have the kids you know <laughs> next to you there uh this little girl sitting next to me all of a sudden a mile from school i hear <laughs> and i go no 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 ellie don't cry don't no ellie don't cry don't cry oh over every time i try to take her to school <laughs> she's a mile from school she's talking no <laughs> no 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 ellie finally i said ellie 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 I'll give you a penny. Every day that you don't cry, I'm going to give you a penny. Don't tell your sisters, but I'm going to pay you to go to school. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to give you a penny every day that you don't cry. It works sometimes. And then there were times when it just didn't. I would have to park the car, take her by the hand, bring her into school. Any other parents with me here? Bring her into the school, open the classroom door, put her in, close the door, and walk away, covering my ears because I hear her crying for me as I walk away. So she was just very, that was a tough time for her as a little child growing up. But now, we're dropping her off at college. And Ellie just couldn't hide the fact that she was more than just a bit nervous about being left in that dorm room with a bunch of girls that she didn't know. And when we looked at Ellie, and her eyes began to fill with tears, I'm going, where's my penny? <laughs> where's that penny? Her eyes began to fill with tears. I tell you what, <laughs> mom and dad almost <laughs> packed her up, put her in the car, and took her home again. <laughs> it was tough. We tried to be strong. We tried to show her that there was nothing to be afraid of. But you know what? The moment we closed that door, the door of her dorm room, said our goodbyes and closed that door, the moment, Jen, you're, you're gonna, you stop that. <laughs> the moment we closed that door, both mom and dad, we burst into tears. And I'm not kidding you. We cried all the way home. We did it in tag team fashion. <laughs> I'd blubber like a baby for a while, and then when I had to give it up, I'd tag her, and she'd, <laughs> you know, just, just, oh, <laughs> you know, just, and then when she was done, she'd take me, and I'd start over again. We cried all the way home. That's the way it was. But as hard as that was for mother, it was only the preparation for the day when that last apron string would be undone. I'm going to play some music for you as I close here, uh, just to kind of set the tone. I can get it to go here. I want you to picture wedding day. Are we all there? Are we all here? It's wedding day. Are you there? What's going on? Well, the caterers have arrived. They were busy running around. They got the cake set up. They brought in the tuna salad. They, they got all the little buns. They're throwing out you know, white tablecloths and setting 
dishes and tableware and all these things. The, the, there's a photographer running around. There's, uh, the florist has come. There's flowers everywhere. They're getting uh, bouquets and boutonnieres. The, the bridesmaids and the groomsmen are, are tucked away in, in different rooms and they're all primping and getting ready. And, and every, it's just a buzz. Everything's going around before the wedding and hustle and bustle everywhere. And in the middle of all this hustle and bustle, in the sanctuary, sitting up front by herself, right here, sits the godly mother. And in her mind and in her heart, she is replaying frame by frame every precious moment that she has shared with that child. If you women out there don't stop crying, you're going to get me going. <laughs> She's praying. She is replaying every moment that she has shared with that child. All the laughter. All the joy. All the tears. Even chasing them up the staircase with the yardstick. All these pictures are flooding her mind and her heart as she sits there all by herself. And in her heart, she would like nothing more than to somehow return that child to the days when that child needed her desperately and her alone. But mother knows her God-given role. She knows her God-given role. And so mother gives. And a, a minister will step up and clear his voice, clear his throat and say, <clears throat> who gives this woman to be married to this man in holy matrimony? And that dad will turn and he will look into the eyes of his wife. Into that mother's eyes. I've done this three times. That mother's eyes full of tears. And he will turn back to that minister and say, her mother and I do. And with those words, the divinely ordained cycle will begin again. Am I right? With those words, the divinely ordained cycle will begin again. And before long, that wife will be holding a brand new gift from God all wrapped up in either a pink or a blue blanket. And in the days and the months and the years to come, that new family is going to understand just how much a mother gives. Am I right? Amen. Amen. Let's stand together. Let's pray. Father, Lord, the Apostle Paul reminded us that at the beginning, woman came from a man. But ever since that day, we have all come from a very special woman, our mothers. And Father, on this day, we just want to pause. We want to pause And we want to give you thanks. Every one of us today, our experiences have been different. Every one of us, we grew up in homes that were slightly different than the person sitting next to us. There were good times, there were difficult times. But oh God, none of us would be here if it weren't for our parents.
and today we honor our mothers. We honor their memories if they have passed away. We thank you for them. And for those mothers that are still with us, Lord, give us an opportunity to express our love and our thanks on this day. But as your word says, all things are from God. And so we begin by giving you the praise today. Thank you. Thank you for our parents. Thank you for our moms. And Lord, we here who are moms and dads, I pray, Lord, that we would strive to be the men and women that you called us to be as moms and dads, to give you honor first, above all, in our homes. But then, especially today, thinking of our moms, that we would be those mothers that would demonstrate all these different ways in which we give. Bless, I pray, O oh God, our mothers today. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless y'all.